I'm Bruce Wessner with Life Cycle Engineering. I'm a managing principal with the organization and I wanted to spend some time with you this afternoon to discuss a recent presentation that I had done at Reliable Plant. Uh, and the subject matter was around operations-led reliability. In that presentation, what I tried to bring across to the group was around who really owns the asset. Who is the asset owner in a production facility? I bring it back to uh, real life. I own a 98 Volvo, uh, and that car, you know, 182,000 miles, continues to run. Why is that? Well, because I've been an active owner, and taking care of that asset is my responsibility. So if you use that example, and uh, you threw the ownership of that asset to, or that car to a uh, mechanic, they aren't in it. They don't hear it, touch it, feel it, smell things that maybe I would see and, and uh, feel in my driving it every day. So what I want to do is go through four themes that I covered during the presentation that are fundamental and critical towards operations-led reliability. Theme one spoke about operator care rounds. So you say, why would that be our first theme? Uh, we feel and we have seen in many organizations where engaging the folks that are out on the front lines early in the process is very important. So operator care rounds is just that. Bring them into you know, finding uh, and identifying uh, early issues within the process. It's creating a, a process for them to, to take a walkabout within the process and measure things consistently. They've got a checklist that they work from and taking that checklist every day and working to make sure that the process works within those confines is critical. The findings they have may fall on two sides of the operation. One, things within their scope, things that they can fix. The other side is where they may need to pull in the maintenance organization, the specialists, to come in and help them resolve a chronic issue. Theme two focused around loss elimination. So what is loss elimination? It's really those day-to-day -day failures of the asset and, a, and its performance of uh, whatever it's supporting within the operation. So where the loss elimination theme focuses is creating a process, a continuous improvement process, where you go out and you collect data. Data that is then taken and put into a Pareto really to identify the big hitters. Where do we focus our resource? Taking that and then handing it to or engaging resources that are within the process and or specialists that you bring in from uh, within the organizations to focus specifically around those losses that were found. What we've also found is a, as a very good tool in order to be able to support that is what we call A3 thinking. Uh, A3 came from Toyota Production Systems, and it's a process where it really defines um, the project. It puts some borders and boundaries around the project. So that's something you can find more information on our website about A3 thinking if you have more interest there. Theme three, implement standard work. Before we go here, a big caution. If you haven't been able to put in place and sustain the first two that we talked around being operator care rounds and loss elimination, that's having a process that is you know, able to sustain and, and be done day in, day out, and ownership taken by the group that's been deployed in, don't go to step three. If you have obtained that and they are working and holding these as day in, day out deliverables within the process, then we go to step three. Step three around implementing standard work takes that day in, day out operation and refines it to the next stage. What we do there is we focus around really operational procedures and standards. It's putting in place consistency. How many organizations have you been in that there was a huge difference between how first shift operated, second shift, and third? It was like they were three different companies, but yet they worked within the same process. So 
that those consistent operator procedures and standards are key. Next thing would be really focusing around how do we start up the process, how do we shut down the process, how do we make a changeover within the process. The other thing that supports the first around procedures is how do I hand over to the next shift in order to be able to make that process run the same day in, day out, giving you overall process stability. And last is if there's anything that you find through uh, implementing standard work that would require new procedures and new standards. Uh, it's engaging those at this point in time so that you know everything that is required to run that process is in place. That's key. The last step, step four, is autonomous maintenance. Now there's a lot of books out there on TPM so you know, feel free to reach out. Those seven steps of autonomous maintenance are very standard and if you'd like more information around that feel free to come back to us and, and we can help you with it. Uh, I'd like to kind of wrap up around, so what are the keys or success factors that need to be in place in order to make operator care rounds, loss elimination, implementing standard work, and autonomous maintenance happen? Well, those keys really uh, are five things. It's really starting very basic, engaging the doers within your organization. Those folks that are out there in the process day in and day out that are, that are living with the pain. Have them be part of the solution. Second would be around active leadership. If we don't have active and engaged leadership, that means leaders that are out there um, doing the managing by walking around and touching the workforce uh, and being active, you know, that's what's going to have those folks that are out there actually doing the process recognize the importance of the efforts and actions that they're taking place. So active and visible leadership is key. Third thing is communication. Um, you know, how many times do we say, oh, we're, we're communicating effectively? Well, all I say is communicate, communicate, communicate. The more we talk, the more that we uh, spread positive things, good things that are happening, the more that the organization can grow and learn from that. Uh, fourth thing is around reinforcing positives. Okay. How many organizations have, have you been in where all you heard was what didn't happen right, the bad things? I come back and we really recognize positive success. Make those positives be the things that we focus on. Have those constructive coaching moments you know, those are key, but have them be learnings, not negatives. And lastly, celebrate success. Uh, by celebrating success, again, the organization understands that these things that I'm doing day in and day out are important, and they're helping us, you know, build our organization to be competitive. If you'd like to have more information or hear more about this subject, feel free to go to www.lce.com. Thank you.